My name is Benjamin Cotton, and for today's episode of The Locker Room, we have the Goshen College women's basketball team, where I will interview both head coach and assistant coach, Stephanie Miller and Benny Granado. Also, we'll walk 94 feet with Grayson Packerham and senior Allison Priggy. All that's coming next on The Locker Room. probably say my first two coaches I ever had had a major impact on just develop me, developing me as a person. Uh, it was my junior varsity and my varsity coach back. I played at Girl Zeal and uh, it was just, it was a real family atmosphere and they, they really pushed you but made you, you know, develop, like I said, as a, as a person but also as a player. But uh, I wasn't sure I was going to coach. I just knew that I loved, you know, having that influence in my life. Uh, when I went and worked for David McCracken, who's part of the McCracken family, Branch McCracken's name is on uh, IU's court. He was a legendary coach for IU. Uh, his son, Dave, uh, hired me to work for McCracken Camps, and he was an, a huge impact not only on my life, but a lot of the people that I know and a lot of coaches that I know. Uh, just inspiring um, and providing us with some true depth in terms of like what we wanted to do with basketball as a career and the people that we were influencing. Coach Vinny, same for you. Is there anything that stood out to you that made you want to become a basketball coach? It's more from like, like when I first, you know, fell in love with basketball. You know, I remember watching the, the Detroit Pistons and Los Angeles Lakers, mm -hmm. and I watched that, and I had, I had a great time watching that series. And then as I grew up in middle school and high school, I got more and more involved with the game, learned more about the game, and that's probably where like I transcended my love for like the game, and maybe I want to coach. You know, and that's that's pretty much where like it all it all started for me. And going back to day one, do you remember your first your first coaching job? Yeah. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much right here. Yeah, it's been a great, great time. Yeah. I remember that interview. I do. Yeah. <laughs> he had a good. He had a good interview. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the interview? Uh, it was when I first shot here. It was like first time in Indiana, first time in the Midwest. Um, I lived back in Pennsylvania, and the one thing to me that stood out about it, because it was a, I think a, a phone call or two, a Skype call, then I got on campus. So I didn't have to get to one of the final interviews there. And when I first got on campus, I just liked like the home feel of it all. You, you know this, you guys know this because you're, you're here, but just like the, the small, it's small but not too small. I loved how it was just like, you could walk to the different buildings, the way the facility was laid out. And then the biggest thing for me was, was my boss would be, Stephanie, just I feel connected in a way that I was like, wow, she really cares for her players. She really is just like involved in her program more than I think other coaches are. And I think that's a really big thing I could learn from. And I took it, I was like, wow, I could learn a lot from her. And that's why I was like, man, I, I think this is this is the job and the place for me. And same question for you, Coach Moe. Do you remember your first coaching gig you had? Well, first I want to go back to his question because that interview uh, and what he's talking about was uh, was part of what sold me on him too, and it's what he does so well with our players. Um, he's genuine. He's pretty passionate. Uh, that We match that way, so I could see a little bit of him and me and, and vice versa. Uh, but the best part about him in that interview that sold me was, um, you know, what I look for just in coaches and in players, and it's just um, passion and being genuine. He's real. He's a real guy. Um, you know, he's not trying to fluff things up and tell me what I want to hear. He's not a yes man. I don't, I don't like to, to work with people that will tell you whatever you want to hear, even though you might think that sometimes. Um, I don't, and he's, he's real good at just kind of being honest, and, uh, and he's that way with the girls, too. He's honest with them and very genuine with them. So uh, it was a pretty good match, uh, and, and we both felt that. So he's been here for a while now. And during the recruiting process, are there any characteristics that stand out to you when you're watching that player, when you look at her and you just know that she's the one? There's a few characteristics, and um, obviously you look at tangible things when you're in a gym. You know, can a kid shoot, dribble? Can they lock down, defend? You know, those things pop off the, you know, right off the, the bat for me. But it really comes down to a lot more than that for me. I'm more of a, an intangibles type play, you know, coach. Um, what I look for mostly is toughness. You know, a kid who I think can, you know, it's, it's hard to gauge uh, mental toughness when you're in the recruiting process because it takes a little bit more time. And, and But you can see some physical toughness. Kids who like to really get on the floor, make extra plays. I like kids who can really rebound. Vinny knows that. I like kids who like the glass and want to play physical. Sure. And and part of that is is in our in our system, the way we run things. We want them to work hard and play hard and dive and you know, get get an extra elbow in there so they can 
grab a board. I think physical toughness, toughness translates into mental toughness, and I think that's what it takes to actually be a winner in our league and in this conference. You can't do it by being weak. So I look for kind of tough-minded kids, and little things that I see when I'm watching a game make a bigger difference than a shot made. Like, how do they handle themselves when it doesn't go well? How do they handle themselves when they exit the game? Are they communicating with their team? Are they a leader? Do they have a voice? Do they sit at the end of the bench because it's not going well? I look for the kids that really stand out that way as great character kids, great hard workers. Coach Brown, how would you describe the relationship you have with your players, not just on the court but off? As you get to know your players, and first of all, when you're coaching, that's one of the toughest things, actually, is making sure to be able to identify with your players and relate to them, I think. Um, you can bring in all kinds of talent, different ways, you know, talk about offense, defense, skills, and things like that. But if the players, if you don't know them as people and you don't show how, you know, some depth in that connection or relationship, I think it stunts your growth as far as what you can get from that kid. So... I like to work hard on those relationships. Um, I think it would make sense in any in any scenario like this that you know you win some, you lose some, and and not everybody um, is someone that I've been able to uh, get to know as well. But a large majority of my players uh, throughout the years, I've been here nine years now, I've been able to find something and connect with them. I would describe the relationship that I have with them as uh, as I mentioned before, genuine. Uh, I think it's kind of a there's a little bit of love-hate going on there. When I say that, I just mean it's like mom, right? You love her, but sometimes you, you, you can't stand that I'm on them. And then academically, on the court, push them, expect things from them, call them out on things, hold them accountable. Those are things that always are a little contentious in a relationship. But when you do it, and you do it with love, and you do it with care about the people as individuals, uh, I think for the most part, I get kids to run through a wall, and they work very hard. And I think it's mostly because they know at the end of the day, that actually genuinely care about them as people and, and their future. And speaking of Allison Briggs, she also has great character. Can you just talk to us about the relationship that you built with her over the past four years? Yeah, well, I mean, that's first of all, that's that was his find, and so i got to give credit where credit is due. He brought her uh, to me and said, yeah, look at this tall shooter, right? And uh, I said, <laughs> I said, is she tough? <laughs> um, he said, oh, no, you're going to go have to check that out. So I went and saw she was a rebounder. She was playing for AU Tim. I remember meeting her. I remember the first time I met her, and uh, she was a little shy, which is funny, because if you know Allison now, she's the opposite of shy. Um, and I met her uh, in Toledo, and I remember thinking, you know, this kid's got a lot of skills that are going to really translate. Uh, but most of all, what I found right away with Allison is what you just said, a really top-notch human, a really great person, and uh, she has some real depth to her as far as, like, what she means to our team. And when I say depth, I don't mean she's just a shooter or she's just a rebounder. The kid can play. She's a great player. And she's really developed over the years. You know, she got off to a rough start with some injuries and such. But what's really impressed me the most about Allison and kids like her that we bring into the program and, and make it through strong four years, right, is just how they change and how they develop um, from, you know, from their character all the way up to their leadership. And for her... She impresses the heck out of us from a leadership standpoint. She's really taken on a nice role with our team. Um, has a voice in the locker room that really touches a lot of different kids. Uh, and she knows what we want. She's a great extension of the coaching staff in terms of just understanding what our program is about, what we stand for, and she's really proud to represent us, which is something that is hard to find. And final question, just could you just explain the culture you two are just trying to build here at Goshen College? I think it's kind of what you said earlier about just a, you know, a strong-minded, physical, tough culture. You know, uh, it's team first, not me. It's more we as a team. And I think going back to recruiting, that that's what we look for for recruits. You know, just great families, great kids. You like embody that culture by that physicality. They know that hey, listen, I'm going to sacrifice myself for the greater good of the team. And that's something that we've looked for and that we've built um, over the course of the last couple of years. I think I'd keep going with that. He's he's spot on there and say like a. Uh, an atmosphere of trust among ourselves. I think trust is really key among players because I think when you're talking to recruits and you're talking to families, you know, every program wants to sell themselves as a family, right? And in, in, in the forefront, that's like what? We're all, we're all love, we all love each other, we all get along, we all, but it's not really like that. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like, what's your family like? What's my family like? Do you have crazy problems and crazy uncles and bad things that go wrong? You know, we're a family and that means the good and the bad. 
And so we have good times, we have bad times, and you know, it's 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 a battle in there, right? We're playing, we're trying to take each other's jobs, you know, like you're competing, so it can't all be, you know, we're singing in the locker room, loving on each other every day. What it is instead is it's a it's an atmosphere of trust where we know that we take care of ourselves and take care of everyone within that circle. And we also have a sense of understanding that when things go wrong, it's gonna be okay. We're going to work it out. We're going to fight at practice. You might get yelled at by your coach. Someone might be in tears. There might be something going on that might be a little difficult for us to handle. But at the end of the day, the girls know and the coaches know that we have each other's backs. And no matter what happens, we're going to be okay because we have a strong trust among, among our group. And that's the kind of culture that I think, again, is toughness related. It comes down to being real and understanding. You know, everyone has problems, but we're going to help each other get through those things. Thank you for coming to the locker room, and good luck to the rest of your season. Coming up, we have 94 feet, where I'll walk with Grayson Cockerham and Allison Priggy. So, Grayson, you're in your second season of your college career. Let's just start with something simple. What's your favorite coat? Purple. Uh, you have a favorite basketball player? Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry. Uh, favorite food? Macaroni and cheese. Favorite movie? Love and basketball. Okay. And now, let's, let's slow down a little bit. Let's, like I said, you're in your second season. Let's just go back to day one. You remember that? Yes, in third grade, I begged my parents to let me play basketball so I could be like my big brother. And at the end of the season, they told me, uh, we don't think this is a sport for you, but I made them sign me up for the next season. And is, is, there, is there anything about your big brother that has like such a big influence on you? He's definitely um, one of my main supporters. He helped me develop a love for the game, and he's my best friend, so we're very close. And do you have any special high school, middle school memory that stands out? Um, my favorite memory would have to be senior year when my team was the underdog and we actually made it to the state quarterfinals, which is only the second time in our school history. And you were number four for the Maple Leafs. Is there anything behind that? Um, honestly, no. Um, I wore a different number in high school, but that number wasn't available. My favorite number is three. Okay. So. Yeah, well, this is Grayson Cockerham with 94 feet. Thank you for watching. We'll get back to our interview. Um, for me, I was looking at a lot of schools closer to home. Goshen isn't too far away. It's about two and a half to three hours, and that was a good distance for me. Um, but honestly, coming here on my visit, it just felt different than like other visits. I got along with the girls really well. Coach Miller made me feel really at home. And to be honest, all the players here kind of said the same thing, is that they were shocked by how homey the school felt, and that's kind of something that I was looking for coming in. I wanted to feel like I belonged, like I would be at home. And Grayson, you're coming out of Michigan. Can you tell me why you chose Goshen College over your other offers to come here? Um, a lot of people, to me, were focused on playing at the highest division possible. And for me, I was looking for a school that wanted me as bad as I wanted them. And I thought Goshen really um, fulfilled that for me. It felt like home away from home, and so it just was comfortable. So let's talk about Coach Miller. Can you just tell me about the impact that she has on you, not just on the court, but also off? Oh, man. Um, yeah, Coach Miller and I have been through a lot together, uh, a lot of ups and downs, but honestly, she's one of the most supportive people that I have in my life today. There's so much that I've been through at Goshen. Uh, you know my freshman year, everything that could have happened happened. I'm mono, my appendix ruptured, I broke my leg, like it was just a mess. And Coach Miller was a huge uh, support system for me. And even to this day, has helped me with a lot of uh, some of the personal things that I've experienced off the floor and she's a great coach and an even better person. So you're, Grayson, you're in your second season as a sophomore. Can you tell me what was the hardest transition from high school to college? Definitely just the physicality, the speed of the game, and just being able to adapt, adapt and learn quickly. So Allison, are there any players that really stood out to you that just had a big impact on you as a leader? Yeah, um, to be honest, there was a couple and everyone kind of played a different role. Kelsey Fraley, I was really close with. Um, she was a senior my freshman year, and her and I got along really well off the floor and on the floor, but she was just the hardest worker in the gym every day. I remember Kala, um, another senior, the biggest sweetheart, and she was kind of the one that handled the culture among the team and the locker room conversations and that kind of stuff. And then uh, Sophia Sears is one of the best point guards I've ever played with in my life, uh, two-time All-American. And so having her on the floor was just a calming presence and after uh, she graduated, it was, it was so different playing with someone else because she just had such strong leadership skills on the floor.
So Grayson, in your eyes, how would you describe the culture of the women's basketball team? Um, this year, I think we are all bought into the same goal. We have the same mindset, and we're just focused on accomplishing those goals. So I think we work very well together, and we're friends off the court, and we get along on the court. So that makes it easier to win games and just play basketball. To be honest, uh, she kind of touched on it. It changes every year, and my freshman year is so different to how it was sophomore year, to how it was junior year, to how it is this year. And I tell people all the time, this is the best team that I've been a part of. It's the favorite team that I've had here in all four years. Everyone gets along so well. Uh, this is the best culture that I've had, or excuse me, that I guess the team has had since I've been here. Um, and that's kind of what I was hoping for is each year taking strides forward. And if you want to win games, you've got to have good culture. And I know that next year after I graduate, uh, they're going to have some really great leaders and the team is in perfect position um, to do some great things. The culture is just going to go up from here. So looking back, you definitely made the right decision to come to Goshen College. A hundred and ten percent. Yeah, I would not be the same person if I had not come here. Uh, I've made lifelong friendships and... To be honest, I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter if you win games, lose games, you play a lot, you don't play a lot. Like the program has so much to offer and I'm so grateful to have been a part of it. So Allison, you're in your fourth year, final year of college career. Mm -hmm. So how's it feel to be the oldest of the group? Um, everyone keeps calling me mom and I'm like, listen, I'm only 22 years old, all right? <laughs> Y'all, I'm not that much older than you. No, but it's, it's awesome. Yeah, all right, well, let's keep things simple. So what's your favorite movie? Um, not a huge fan of movies, love TV shows, uh, have you seen The Office? Oh, of course. Love The Office. So who's your favorite character? Oh, Michael Scott. He is so funny. See, it's hard to pick one with a great show like that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, blue. Okay, and going back to high school or middle school, what was your favorite basketball memory? For me, um, was probably ending my career as a Patriot, uh, on our senior night, I had my career high 31 points, we got the win. All of us seniors played really well, and it was honestly just the best way to end your career at home. And who in your family really stands out to you? Is like you really want to play for them? My dad. He played college basketball, and for me, I just want to make him proud. And he's one of the most influential people in my life. And I just, I don't know, I strive to be like him as a basketball player and as a person. Yeah. Thank you. This has been 94 Feet with Allison Priggy. That's going to wrap up the locker room. Next week, we'll have William Troyer, who covers the men's basketball team with head coach John Trope and assistant Trevor Carmaceres. We'll also have two players coming in as have Robert Sanders and Tanner Kent. See you next time here on The Locker Room.